I've learned a lot about solar and home storage batteries recently, so if you're thinking of getting a battery for your solar or just a battery only system, today's video I'm going to tell you five things that I wish I knew before I bought a home storage battery. Now as we all know, size is everything. Pick too small and you won't have a battery big enough to take you through the day of energy. Pick too big and you might never use all that energy. So make sure you size the system correctly for what you actually need. Now as a rule of thumb, most homes will need about a 10 kilowatt hour battery. Some systems will, might only need a five kilowatt hour battery and some people will need a lot bigger. Luckily, most of these systems are modular. For example, both these two systems are completely modular. This one here from Heatable can be sized up with several modules and I've got another one that I'm currently sat on right now that is going to be going into this current five kilowatt model to make it 10 kilowatt hours. Now, what you don't want to do is oversize the system, like I said, because you won't have either the capacity to use it all or you won't have the capacity for something else that we're going to talk about in a minute. Don't assume that you've got a battery that you've got emergency backup power. Now a lot of these systems can do emergency backup power but only for so many circuits in your house. Now that's pretty much true from all the systems that we're going to be talking about. So these two systems can do backup power but you connect a separate fuse board for the stuff that you want to be powered. Now some of the other systems like Tesla, they do do um, a system called a gateway which will essentially turn the power off automatically and switch it on during an emergency of a power cut. However, again, you can't power really high power devices on this. You've still got the limit of what the battery can do. And what's also worth noting that all the systems, including these and the Tesla Powerwall, will require you to change your earthing arrangements if you're on certain earthing systems. That mean, might mean groundwork for putting a ground mat in for earth or putting lots of earth spikes in all around your house. Now, how everyone uses their energy is slightly different. You might want to just charge up from your solar. You might be charging off peak and then discharging peak or you might want to go on a deal like Octopus Flux. Octopus Flux lets you charge up during cheap rate electricity at night and discharge during peak for a profit between those two. Now, if you're planning on doing that, check your battery system that you're getting because not all battery systems let you make the choice between when you charge and discharge. They might restrict this in their terms or their warranty that you can't discharge the battery fully during a time period and charge up during a time period. So for example, some batteries even restrict it in the warranty documents to say that your warranty is invalid if you want to do this. Now the speed that you can charge your battery is defined by this top section of both these batteries which are called the inverters. Now you have your batteries that are in kilowatt hours, that's storage power, and then you have your inverters which are in kilowatts, that's the speed they can charge at. Now typically you'll see 3.65 kilowatts as the speed that the battery can charge at, but there's also 5 kilowatt inverters and 10 kilowatt inverters. Now this is important when sizing your battery, because what you don't want to do is put 40 kilowatt hours of batteries in, want to charge off peak and find out that your battery can only be charged at 3.65 kilowatts. Now again it gets even more confusing because some inverters are hybrid inverters. The hybrid inverters might be capable of charging 3.65 with solar and also the battery being powered to your house, but they can't charge the battery at 3.65. So make sure whichever inverter you pick, you check not only the discharge speed that it can put it back into your house, but also the charge speed in which it can charge the battery, because they're not always the same. Now you have two systems, you have a hybrid inverter and an AC coupled inverter. Hybrid inverters take solar directly into them, and AC inverters take it from the AC source. Now there is advantages and disadvantages between these two, so I recommend that you check out this video explaining the advantages and disadvantages of an AC coupled and hybrid battery inverter. 